Coming up on First at Four, presidential immunity and the former president's federal election interference case is now before the U.S. Supreme Court. Why legal analysts say justices have their work cut out for them. Plus, leaders in eastern Kentucky are coming together to discuss some of the region's most challenging problems. We'll have a look. Plus, we are tracking a summer preview for this weekend. Your forecast on the wave as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, the Supreme Court heard arguments today in a case expected to impact all future presidents. The justices are wrestling with former President Trump's claim that he should be immune from criminal prosecution. It's already put his trial for charges related to 2020 election interference on hold. CBS's Natalie Brand has more from the Supreme Court. We're yes. writing a rule for, yes. for the ages. The nine justices are faced with a question that's never been before the high court, whether a former president is immune from criminal prosecution. If a president can be charged, put on trial, and imprisoned for his most controversial decisions as soon as he leaves office, that looming threat will distort the president's decision making precisely when bold and fearless action is most needed. There is no immunity that is in the Constitution unless this court creates it today. The justices appeared skeptical of Trump's attorney's arguments of broad immunity. He talks to his generals all the time and he told the generals, I don't feel like leaving office. I want to stage a coup. Is, is, is that immune? If, if it's an official act, there needs to be impeachment and conviction beforehand. But some suggested former presidents might have some immunity. They also delved into the difference between official and unofficial acts. There are many other people who are subject to impeachment, including the nine sitting on this bench. And I don't think anyone has ever suggested that impeachment would have to be the gateway to criminal prosecution for any of the many other officers subject to impeachment. So why is the president different? In questioning that lasted nearly three hours. Legal analysts saw the justices wrestling with where to draw the line. I absolutely do not count to five, meaning five out of the nine justices, on either extreme position, on either that there's no immunity or that there's absolute immunity. Legal analysts say the Supreme Court's opinion could delay Trump's federal election interference trial until after the November election. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, Donald Trump was back in a New York courtroom today for his hush money trial. A longtime tabloid publisher took the witness stand. We'll have more on that coming up at 530. Well, as promised, we are tracking some really nice weather on this Thursday. We are dry under some sunshine. Those temperatures also comfortable. Let's take a live look from Pulaski County from downtown Somerset. Plenty of sunshine over in Somerset. That current temperature is close to average up to 70 in Pulaski County. And again, most of us in the upper 60s to lower 70s at this hour up to 66 in Jackson, 64 in Pikeville and 70 for Manchester, 74 over in Harlan County at this hour. Up on the radar, a clean sweep as high pressure is the big story and that will bring some more dry weather as we close out your Thursday. Those lows not as cold tonight. Most of us wake up in the middle 40s to walk out the door on your Friday. But speaking of your Friday, we are watching out for that next rain chance as moisture is set to increase to close out the work week. Some good news. No severe storms. Also no constant rain on Friday, but we are tracking a few showers at times and the big story for this weekend. We are warm as highs are back in the middle 80s by Sunday. Also for early parts of next week. All those details coming up in just a little bit. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. The 36th annual East Kentucky Leadership Conference kicked off earlier today in Corbin with folks from across the region taking part in conversation about various topics. WYMT's RJ Johnson is there. Combat communities, housing and redevelopment strategies is this year's theme of the East Kentucky Leadership Conference. Day one included sessions of discussing the future of housing with the Women in Housing panel. Wendy Smith serves as the Deputy Executive Director for Housing Programs with the Kentucky Housing Corporation. She says gathering as leaders provides ways for new conversations to help make change in the community. 
when you're getting leaders together, getting them thinking about the state or the region's most challenging problems is really valuable because you're going to get good ideas, different ways of thinking about it. And one of the, the things that I really liked about this was a lot of folks saw ways to try to frame housing as economic development and as an investment in Kentucky's future. Smith says the most important part of gatherings like this is taking what they've learned and implementing them into making change. In Corbin, RJ Johnson, WIMT Mountain News. Other panels included discussing youth voices and the Corbin story. Lawmakers have secured funding for projects in Leslie County. The Leslie County Fiscal Court was awarded $2 million for the Leco Park project. The project includes plans for a complex with baseball fields, hiking trails, and other activities. Site Supervisor Stephen Carrier says the community is excited about the project. Even the adults are excited about just seeing the growth and just something coming here you know like they've lost so much with all the coal and everything going away but they're excited about seeing the growth and seeing what's going on up here lawmakers also secured more than three million dollars for a gap both projects were line items in house bill one first responders were called to a home in garrett county today after part of it collapsed early this morning it happened in lancaster the homeowners were asleep when part of the floor and outside wall gave way. No one was hurt. Everyone got out okay, and the Red Cross is helping them. The homeowner says the home was built in the 1850s. The Lancaster Fire Chief says the exact cause is not known, but sometimes wood will rot and give way if water gets into the structure. Officials ruled the house as uninhabitable until repairs can be made. Dream Appalachia is hosting a free community concert tonight, and one legendary musician and Eastern Kentucky native is set to perform. Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder will be at the Booth Energy Center in Inez. Again, admission is free, which means time is also running out for you to get a ticket. For more about this, you can go to Dream Appalachia's Facebook page, and we'll also have a reporter at the concert tonight and have much more at 11. But coming up next on First at Four, more than 100 whales are saved after being stranded off the coast of Australia. We'll take you to that rescue. Plus, we stay dry today, but that next rain chance is looming. Timing out those showers after this break.